So let's talk about Hackintosh. I haven't really covered Mac yet on this channel, and I've told people, you know, it's something that I'm looked into, and I actually was big part of the Hackintosh community back in the late 2000s. So this is something that I wanted to do because I'm all about giving you options. Uh, a lot of people know me for my Linux work, and occasionally like my Windows, but I haven't really touched on uh, the Mac side of things. So that's what we're going to talk about in this video. I'm going to go over the basics, what to expect, our Hackintosh is legal, all these things that go into it. So you can make a decision whether or not this might be something you want to actually tackle and do. So first thing out of the gate, is it legal? And this is kind of a gray area. So uh, no, I don't think Apple's going to knock on your door if you do a Hackintosh and be like, oh, what are you doing in there and, and sue you if you were to do it. However, if you were to make a bunch of computers using the Hackintosh method and then try and resell them as Macs, you will get sued. So there's a good case and that's already been done before. But getting back to actually you doing it, honestly, Apple doesn't care. Uh, this is very much a gray area, mainly because Hackintoshes have a lot of things that go with them to make them very inconvenient, such as big updates or version updates on Mac OS is not going to go well on a Hackintosh. So when you do a Hackintosh, you're pretty much locked into this version. And for this, that kind of is a huge turnoff for some people, but also uh, I think Apple thinks of Hackintosh as almost like a gateway drug. It gets you so used to the Mac ecosystem, and if you really love the Mac OS, well, you're probably going to go out and go buy a Mac. So for these reasons, uh, you know, I think the Hackintosh is a really fun thing to do, and I don't consider it illegal. Uh, however, if you do try to resell it and make profits, these types of things, it is definitely illegal in, in that respect. But for just the hobbyist out there, it's totally fine. I, I just want to go ahead and say that. Now, uh, I'm sure somebody's roasted me down in the comment section for saying that, but I just want to say this, uh, the legality aspects of Hackintosh or Mac OS is, is this, you never own Mac OS. You can go buy a MacBook Pro, spend $3,000 on it, and you don't own that OS. Their terms of service are extremely aggressive, and by all intents and purposes, everyone that's using Mac OS is leasing it. Now that we've gotten through the legal aspects of things, let's talk about what to expect. What computers are good? What computers aren't good? What computers am I going to use? So first up, Intel is king in the Hackintosh world, mainly because you don't have to do a bunch of custom things to the kernel to get it working. This is very good for updates and other things, and, and it makes your life a heck of a lot easier. So if you have a nice i5 or i7 laying around, you're going to have an easier time than, let's say, a Ryzen user such as myself. Not to say you can't do it under Ryzen, it just makes things a little more difficult. So I want to go ahead and touch on those two things as far as graphics cards go. Again, uh, this is kind of a weird subject. Most times people prefer the NVIDIA things when it comes to Mac. However, AMD chips do now work. So this is kind of a surprising development as I jumped back into the Hackintosh community a little bit and read a lot of things that was going on. Uh, seeing the, like the RX cards from AMD work on Hackintoshes, I was floored. I thought that's pretty awesome. So very neat to see some new hardware support. And really the Hackintosh community has come a long way since the last time I looked at it. So uh, any hardware works, just know that the level of difficulty, honestly, uh, the tried and true way is to have an Intel chip, exclusively Intel. And if you want a beefy card to go with it or an external graphics card, typically NVIDIA's fare a little bit better. However, I did get my Ryzen chip going with an RX 480 or 580 and hey everything's possible I just want to go ahead and say what's the easier path here and then thirdly as far as downloading and doing this whole thing I've watched quite a few YouTube videos just to see what everyone else is kind of showing people how you get these things and also looking at all the websites and other aspects of downloading and using a Hackintosh. Now, first thing out of the gate, I don't have a Mac. 
here. I, I just don't. I, I can go get one, but I don't have it here. So I'm not going to use a Mac to create a custom installation media. So go ahead and throw out that idea. There's a billion YouTube videos and even more how-to guides for those that already have a Mac that are making a Hackintosh. However, that's not going to be me. I think if you're going to jump into this, you're already a Windows user or a Linux user, and you need to know how to do it from that operating system without ever having a Mac. So uh, all the stuff I'm going to show in this series is going to be from a Windows Linux creation standpoint, and then create that media in those operating systems, and then we're going to burn it directly onto the actual uh, system. So with that said, how much time are you going to spend on this? Now, I'm pretty much uh, an avid user, I would say more advanced, and it took me upwards of about two to three hours of hacking around really to get my feet wet again, get reacclimated to a lot of the nuances of Hackintosh. So uh, I do have a working system after that on one of the most difficult systems to get working in Hackintosh. So if you follow a guide that I'm going to create, I would imagine this would take you around uh, 30 minutes to an hour. If you go out on yourself, jump in uh, for an average user, I would say probably upwards of, you know, three to six hours worth of hacking around and stuff, depending on your luck. So uh, obviously, I just kind of want to lay that out here and also kind of wanted to show you some failure first because these time things, it's its a time commitment. Whenever you learn something new, it, it, you have to spend a lot of time on it. A lot of people can't really appreciate some of those videos I've made on the channel because they just don't see behind the curtain to see how much time I've invested to get that just the perfect install to where you can just follow a video and just go right through. So to end this video out, I kind of want to show you some of my failures, my installs of me recording, and then I'm like, ah, everything's going great, and then blam, right in the ditch. So with that, here's some nice clips of me failing to install Hackintosh, and then in tomorrow's video, we're going to go over the actual official install, but for this one, enjoy this. All right, now that we know that uh, Catalina was a failure, I went ahead, grabbed another one. We're going to go Mojave this time. So uh, take two on doing this one. Now, this one's built specifically for AMD, so should have some success. Hey, 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 this is farther than we've ever gotten before. And I think this one locked up right here, so... All right, um, so we had CSM enabled. I'm going to try and disable CSM, and I don't think that's probably going to do it. Let's see if it locks up right at legacy. It looks like it's going to lock up exactly where it did before. Well, that is a bummer. All right, so this is going to be try number four, I think it is. Uh, I switched sites. I, I'm going to go ahead and ditch and say... Most of the stuff off of the Hackintosh site I was using, which was like the Hackintosh zone, uh, was all just didn't work with AMD chipset. So with that said, I switched over to amd-osx.com. We're going to try some of the stuff from that site. Uh, so here we go. Now, beginning out, I'm going to just keep most of the BIOS settings the same. I think I did tinker around with one of the BIOS settings that I'm going to go back in and change real fast. Yeah, under C CPU configuration, I took SVM and put it enabled. I was just trying something that was probably not the way to do it. So let's save and exit, and then let's try to boot into this drive. Oh, that's cool. I thought it locked up there for a second. I was like, well, that was a quick try. <laughs> but it looks like it just pauses at the end here. So far, it looks like it might load. I'm going to go ahead and say that's not good. Well, alrighty then, um, hmm, it seems like this one worked a little bit better, I got further than I've ever gotten, so, progress? Alright, we're on try number five here, um, gonna go a different tact, creating my own installation media, no more ISOs and DMG files that are six gigs in size that I'm burning to disk as all these have failed, no matter what source I got. I tried random sources, which you should never do, 
And then I tried Hackintosh Zone sources, which also you shouldn't do. And then I tried this AMD OSX site where it downloaded the DMG file. Felt a little bit better. Got as far as it possibly could. But uh, at the same time, I got that error. So now we're actually creating our own USB drive using some tools that are pretty darn cool. So let's see what happens. Oh my God. This is new. Hit record. Um, I see something and it's a progress bar on the screen. And oh my God, that was it. All right. Well, don't stick your installation media in a USB 3 spot. I thought I'd speed things up with that, but I think that was causing me to have a kernel panic or a prohibition thing that it was popping up. Oh, this is so cool. All right, so this way it looks like it's gonna work. Let's, uh, well, let's see. We're gonna go disk utility, wipe this thing out, load up our Mac real fast. Uh, we're gonna do it on the SSD. We'll come here, click erase. We'll name this OS X. It's, I know it's Mac OS now, but whatever. And we'll unmount and format, done, and Note to self, make sure you do a GUID partition map instead of a master boot record. Otherwise you won't have an EFI partition, which without an EFI partition, you can't boot into Mac. So I need to redo all this and make sure I do this. So stay tuned. I'm gonna speed this up and waste another couple hours. Now, that was me failing to install Hackintosh, or somewhat failing. You know, there's certain pieces of success you reach in the Hackintosh realm, and it's really interesting to kind of go through all this again. Uh, I know it was much more difficult uh, back then. Now there's just so many resources. It's really amazing. I would never have envisioned trying to do what I did uh on AMD hardware that's completely not supported by Mac. So uh, the fact that this is available and relatively easy, I, I'm kind of pumped about this. So with all that, I'm gonna leave you here. Know that tomorrow's video will be over the full Hackintosh and I'm gonna stream this out. I'm trying to try and get it down to about 10 minutes for the full install. That's media creation and actually installing Mac with uh, time lapses and those types of things on not the important parts. So uh, I messed up a whole bunch in this video and I wanted to just kind of share all these mess ups because some people out there learn more from failure than they do success. I know I'm one of those people. So uh, whenever I cover a new topic, I kind of like to show people my failures because I think that's important as well. But a big shout out to all my patrons without you. I couldn't make these videos and let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And with all that said, I'll see you on the next one.